How much sleep did you get last night? Zero. So Chris got zero sleep last night. And yet it's still perfectly capable of carrying a ridiculous amount of lift weight. Look at those legs. Ah. seems to be full of bears and I believe it's also due to the fact that we didn't have a lot of blueberries or strawberries at the beginning of the season so there were a lot of hungry bears around. Oh. mentioned that Julie is a complete boss when it comes to camping. She is a total co-star. This is not um, leisurely camping. This is like giant packs portaging across huge distances, covering tons of miles every day to get to a picturesque lake in the middle of the park where it's just you, nature, and no one else for miles. And we are headed all the way over there. Good job, Juliet. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, the first few strokes. That's what you said. <laughs> Goodbye, Brent Access Point. We will see you in seven days. So we are coming up on our first portage. what a good old Canadian portage is like. Big pack on your back, plus a canoe. I was up packing all night long, but uh, whew, surprisingly chipper right now. Feeling like I can do this.
Linux Portage is 300 meters long. There are some campsites at the end of it that we could stay at. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look and then decide from there. So guys, it's uh, just begun to sprinkle a little bit and we have found our first campsite. This is it. Uh, here's our fire pit and we can set up our tent either over there or way back in the bush over there. And uh, yeah, it's going to be home for the night. And I'm going to show you guys what a campsite marker looks like. So these indicate to campers where you can camp in the interior of Algonquin Park. And over here we have a Julia in her natural habitat hiking Carrying through the forest. Heavy things. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Julia. You carry those heavy things. <laughs> I should probably help. This is our view from our first campsite tonight. And the giant waterfall is right over there. Do not paddle in that direction. Oh no! Oh, I can do that. <laughs> I flipped the canoe over and then I was like, what's that floating in the- oh god. <laughs> Map. So Julia's got this crazy, super ultra light tent. Julia has such mad skills in setting up tents that she actually won a tent building competition at a camping store and put so <laughs> and put so many people to shame. And uh, I won hundred bucks. She won a hundred bucks. I should probably help her. <laughs> Quick. First step is putting down the air mattresses. Got our handy bear spray. We'll put that bad boy right over there. Julia scourges through the forest to look for firewood. You're actually only allowed to take firewood that's dead or on the ground already. So all these trees are a big no-no. You cannot cut any of these trees down. You can only take this little twig. Bird bark comes in a giant thing like this. Never pull it straight off the tree. You have to wait until it comes off the tree itself or on a dead birch tree. And what you do, if you try to burn this whole thing, it's not going to burn very well, I don't think. But if you tear off a strip and kind of make it a thin strip, it is an excellent, excellent fire starter. <laughs> so, this campsite is, uh, it doesn't have a grate. I don't think our campsites will. Ooh. Happy. This is where we're going to buy our burgers. By hand. There are Artisan? Artisan? Artisan. Artisan burgers. <laughs> Look at the view, guys. Ooh. Beautiful colors in the sky. I think these burgers are ready for eating. Alright, so we got ketchup, burger, tomato, more burger, kale, mustard, <laughs> bun. <laughs> mm. 
in our relationship. I know that when I do something nice for you, not only do I get the pleasure of your appreciation and gratitude, but you also then do nice things for me, like do the dishes. Yeah.